God you are, everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. Thank you for Jerusalem, the mother of us all. Thank you for every good thing that you have given to us. Now, Lord, today as we begin this service, we pray a very special blessing upon every mother that is here on this very special Mother's Day. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. And may the bountiful blessings of the Lord be released upon every mother here. I humbly ask you in the wonderful, holy name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, you are magnificent. We thank you for every mother that is here today. You are holy and righteous and altogether lovely. And we return to say thank you for being our heavenly Father, holy Father magnificent and giving father we love you today and let the church say amen and all of the men and boys may be seated mothers would you remain standing i want to give very special honor to our mothers today would you help me men give them a round of applause thank god for every mother that is represented here today God bless you, ladies. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you for standing by me through thick and thin, for not giving up on me when I didn't win, for your patience when I kept pushing you away, for caring when I said I didn't need you anyway. I am grateful knowing I can count on your strength, ask for your support, and know you'll go to any length. When I lose my way, you help me get back on track. When in pain, your comfort soothes and brings me back. I am lucky or blessed because when I was sad, you gave me faith and hope. When I was confused, you taught me how to cope. When I felt I couldn't go on, you carried me long miles. When I didn't believe, you restored my smiles. Mom, thank you for your guidance and the faith you've shown, for giving me a safe place, have grown, for showing me how to strive because of your love. 
I will always survive. Happy Mother's Day. Lord, again, we return this morning to say thank you. Thank you for your amazing grace. Lord, you have been so good to us. And today we remember every precious mother who has gone on to their reward. And would you, with me, pause for a moment of silence as we remember those precious loved ones and mothers who have gone on to their reward today. And Jesus, their memory yet lives in all of our minds. And we thank you for the time that you shared them with us. Lord, we're so grateful for the impact that mothers have made upon all of our hearts. We thank you and we praise you. We give you all of the glory. And Lord, for those mothers that are here today, let them be blessed like they have never been blessed before. And let the church say amen. Sister Shields is coming right now to make a special presentation. God bless Sister Shields. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Praise God. What a blessed day to be gathered together. Mother's Day. Amen. The day that the Lord has made. Well, I have been blessed with a distinct honor and privilege and opportunity to honor our First Lady, Sister Scoggins. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Not only today, Mother's Day, but tomorrow for her birthday. So, Sister Scoggins, would you please come? Amen. Oh, isn't she lovely? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Love you so much. Appreciate you so much and value you so much. You are a blessing. And we are so honored and privileged to have you as our first lady, our friend, our sister. Amen. Amen. And I would like to present with, to you this morning your birthday card and your Mother's Day card from all of us. Amen. Amen. And we also have beautiful flowers that's coming. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, they are so beautiful. So beautiful. Amen. So we also have gifts and cards for you that the ones that brought them, you can just leave, take them to the back today and leave them at the back. There's a place for them back at the back. So we thank you and we appreciate you for being here and celebrating with us today. Amen. Sister Scoggins, amen. I told her, I said, I think I'm sneaking a preach. <laughs> Actually, I just want to tell you, thank you so much. I think every single mother should be up here receiving cards and flowers because you do what you do every second, every minute of every day. You are an inc incredible mother, and I love you very much. I want to tell you something that has been in my heart's mothers. If you don't mind, daddies, let me just speak just for a minute to the mothers. It has been, how many of you can say, life has been, it's, it has been. I don't wanna say life has been a struggle because it's not all about the struggle because we've had some victories, but life has been life. It, it has not disappointed us in being life. Every day we wake up, it may be a good day, and it may not be such a good day. But we get to lay our heads down on a pillow at night, and we can say, I am blessed. 
I am blessed. And that's what I have to tell you today. I'm not, I'm really not going to sneak a preach. But in my heart, when I've laid, I've been laying there and the Lord will lay something on my heart. And I say, dear God, touch and bless them. Dear God, go before them. Give them favor. And praying for you, I have felt one thing. I have felt a disappointment that wanted to overshadow our mothers. I almost want to take the wind out of your cell. Almost like it's taking and sucking the air out of your body. Because you can't get, I've t I told this to my husband, I said it's almost as if you can't get, and I'm talking about myself as well. It's like you can't get ex super excited or super sad. And it's that place of just is life. And I thought about it and I said, but you know what? I hate these lights, y'all. Y'all hear me? I hate them. So if y'all see me praising the Lord, I'm praising the Lord. Just say, she's praising the Lord. She is praising the Lord. <laughs> Let me tell you something I've come to realize in the last couple of weeks. It's not such a bad place to be. It is not. It is not. I would hate to know I had to giggle all the time. I would hate to know, and I, who likes to laugh is me, but I would hate to know I lived my whole entire life for that moment of just extreme pleasure, extreme excitement, extreme, extreme, extreme. And I would also hate to know I lived my life in an extreme low, sad place. I don't want to be with somebody that laughs all the time. I sometimes like an intelligent conversation. However, guess who likes to laugh? That would be me, the person with their hand up. But I also, it's not my favorite people to be around is somebody just has what I call the boudet face all the time, just going around looking all blue, just blue all the time. No. So it's not such a terrible thing to, to deal with the norm, normal life. So mothers, if you don't have that feeling of just super greatness or super sadness, I want you to do a little dance beside your bed. Do a little dance in the bathroom and say, I am blessed. Because that is exactly what we are. We are blessed. I have a video I would have loved to have shown you, but it takes too much time. But y'all know I'm a grandma now. Yes. Woohoo. Yes. And there's something that Ellie does and I don't remember Leah doing it, and y'all know I just had the one baby, so I can only go by that. But Ellie does this thing, when she gets tired and sleepy, she gets in a cadence where she goes, rrr, 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 rrr. and she goes, rrr. and she's fussing. It's almost like she's fussing. And she'll go, and she'll go, oh, and I say, oh, baby, mom. Grandma feels you. So I have this thing I do to her. I say, I got you. And I'm holding her. I say, I got you, baby. I got you. I'm holding her. And I'm, you got to hold her, too. And I mean, you don't just get to put your arms lightly around her. You got to hold her because she's moving. She's fighting sleep. And she gets in this cadence. But then I can start singing. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other Jesus is the way Jesus is the answer For the world today Above him there's no other Hear me mama Above him there's no other Above him there's no other Jesus is the way. And I'm just still steadily just rocking that baby. She'll, look, she'll pull that eye up. She's looking at me. And then she closes her eyes and she goes to sleep. That's what the Lord wants you to do. He wants you to take your disappointments, your average day, and don't hate on those days when you don't feel super happy or and don't hate those days when you're not super sad. Be content to know that you 
are blessed. Is everything? You are blessed. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I love the Lord. Do you love the Lord, mothers? Hey, I got another word to tell you. Because I've been praying it deep and feeling it deep. The devil is liar, is lying, and he is great at being a liar. God hears your prayers. What you have concerns about, he knows and he cares. He's got you. Let him rock you. And let him remind you of that song. Jesus is the answer. And all in all, in the end, we're, we're going to pass over that finish line together. And your children are going to be with you. Hold fast to the gospel. Hold fast, mama. Hold fast to your faithfulness. Hold fast to your faith. Hold on. Jesus has you. I love you. I want her to stay with me one moment. And, and I, I, we're going to do the drawing in just a moment. But be seated, please. I, I want to give special honor to our First Lady, not only as her pastor, but also her husband. I, I want to say to her publicly, and I've said it privately, but many of you know, some of you may not know, she had a total hip replacement. And here's, here's, <laughs> here's what she said. She said, I've got to schedule it around Ellie's birth because I've got to go help my daughter. So she scheduled the surgery, went through the therapy, went to be there for her daughter and then of course she had another situation that called for a surgery a desmoid tumor in her abdominal area and they removed that and she said I've got to schedule that surgery so I can fly back to take care of my grandbaby and on top of all of that she's been first lady of our district she's gone to every event She's been first lady of this church, and there's been a lot of funerals. And I want to return to her, and, and, and folks, boy, we should have played that video because she sent the video to me, and the baby was so fussy. But when she started singing, the baby became totally still. I wept. But this is why. Bertha Scoggins doesn't gripe and complain through her difficulties. She sings through them. She sings through them. And I want her to know publicly how much I honor her and love her and keep on singing. In fact, Brother George Guy, who died of COVID and went on to his reward, we were one of the first places or the last places that he preached. And he called Bertha with the word. He said, Bertha, you're under intense adversity. Every demon in hell is fighting against you. He said, but there's one thing he hasn't been able to take, and that is your song. He said, Bertha, keep on singing. So I say to our first lady, you knocked it out of the park today, and just keep on singing. God bless her, our first lady, Bertha Scott. I almost did not do what I planned so hard to do. Have y'all ever done that? You got I, my, my deal was sneak a preach and get out of the way. But you know what? I, how many mothers have your tickets? Okay, first of all, if you don't, if you are a mother and you do not have a ticket, y'all y'all may be seated. If you are a mother here and you do not have a ticket, ushers. Wonderful ushers, good looking, awesome, amazing ushers. Would y'all look when I ask if you do if you are a mother and you don't have a ticket, would you please get our mothers those tickets? Raise your hand so the ushers can get okay, Sister Terry in the back does not have a ticket. My mother in law does not have a ticket. We the choir, we got uh, Sister Christine does not have a ticket. We cannot do a draw until every mother has a ticket. Because in this bags is things that, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, things that I like. <laughs>
I, we started collecting, and then Sister Stesha Barkley. Stesha, would you stand? Yay! I want to tell you, this Sister Stesha Barkley has been amazing. Sister Megan, I want to get this right, Adias, 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 Sister Megan Adias, made a beautiful photo opportunity for you in the piano room, what we call the prayer room, the multipurpose room, the green room, whatever what you want to call it. But it's where that piano is. And for your Mother's Day portraits, pictures, if you would like, it's in there. So y'all go by there. She put that together. It is beautiful. And uh, all right, do all of our mothers get, everybody's get it? Let's go brother. I'm going to read the last. Oh, there it is. Do it up. Look at there. Okay. So I won't even look in there because I saw two different colors and that wouldn't be right, would it? Okay. So I'm going to pull out three numbers and read the last three numbers. I'm going to one side of this deal to the other. I got three. Oh, guess what? The ones that have red tickets, guess what? Okay. Y'all ready? Y'all stand and they'll bring you the, the 446. 446. 446. Somebody's got 446. All right. Hey! Yay! Sister Rhodes. Yay! <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm just going to tell you there's something really thick in there that I like. I actually went to uh, Austin to get that. 426. 426. Yay! <laughs> Sister Gonzalez. Y'all, I love my husband. I want y'all to know he knows your name, your children's name, and he calls it out in prayer. I, I love, we're blessed with a great pastor. Hey. I, and, and what, I'm going to just kill it up here just a second. All that good he had to say about me. I got to tell y'all a funny story. 393. Yes! All right. It, would you tell mine, stand in one more time? 3. Nine, three. Oh, Sister Tyson, look at her. Three, nine, three. Okay, all right, congratulations. Now, uh, Sister, uh, we also have uh, a gift. Did everybody, every mother receive something when you came in? Have we not got it? Okay, well, we'll, we'll, I got every mother something. We'll make sure you get it. Okay, I'm going to tell y'all something funny. Y'all know, obviously, if a, if, a, if a woman, okay, if a woman, let me say this so the men will appreciate this. If a woman goes down, it's not good, is it? And especially if she's married to an A-type personality man who likes to get with it every morning, starting very early. So, uh, I had two surgeries in six months. Y'all, the first surgery was enough to, to do him in. But that second surgery, I was dreading it. I was like, oh, Jesus, I probably should hire somebody. Oh, Jesus, I was worried. I even told Leah, I said, dear Lord, pray. I pray for your daddy, Leah. I wasn't worried about me. I knew I'd, I had the drugs. I was going to be fine. I was seriously worried about the husband. I said, pray for your daddy, because <laughs> he didn't have the drugs. Well, I had called him in the bedroom probably, uh, he says, 15 times. But I'm going to tell the truth. I probably called him in there about six or seven times. And that's a lot, you know, when you call him. Now, I'm not talking about the phone. I'm talking about, Nathan, 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 Nathan. Nathan, Nathan, Nathaniel, Nathaniel Harlan Scoggins, can you hear me? 
Hi. He he had just been in there because I kept forgetting. You know, I, we're going to blame it on the drugs, okay? But he had been in there already just back to back two times. And, uh, well, let's just say he had gotten comfortable in his sleeping attire, and I'm going to leave it at that. He was in the living room, and uh, I heard rodeo going but he forgot to turn off a light and y'all know I don't like lights in my face he forgot to turn the lights off and I'm ready to go to bed and I have a light staring me right in the eye and it just wouldn't go away I tried to put my head over there and smothered me so I hollered Nathan and I heard from the living room what what do you want I said I started laughing. I was, you know, cut from here to here, and I'm going, I'm laughing so hard. I, I've had, I had to put a pillow, and I just gave into it and had the best time. And I was laughing. I was snorting. I said, Nathan, you have had all you can take. It was the funniest, because first of all, he don't holler like, just quite like that. Now, he does holler, but he doesn't holler. He doesn't holler quite like that. That was the most awful thing and I said okay Bertha it's time for you to get get yourself up out of this bed and help that man help him I said God you got to help me to help myself because this man has had it <laughs> I love y'all did y'all have any life in y'all's house <laughs> women don't women let me tell you let me tell you if you have two surgeries in six months the best thing you can do is hire you somebody beg somebody to come and stay with you at especially right there after that week they'll take care of you really really good but you might need somebody to come in and give a brother a hand help the brother i love y'all To all the moms. Moms of children who are still at home or all grown up. Moms who've outlived a son or daughter. Or moms of babies they never got to hold. Moms who've raised kids all on their own or became a mom to someone who needed one. Moms of children who have wandered from God or the longing to be moms who are still waiting. God perfectly arranged each of you into the role you have today. His word recognizes you as capable, strong, and praiseworthy. Everything you do makes our lives more beautiful. Happy Mother's Day. all of our mothers again we salute all of you and thank God for each of you to all of our guests that are here here today we are so honored and delighted to have each and every one of you in the house of the Lord today God has been so good hasn't he hasn't he been faithful God has been so faithful and uh, we're all human and uh, I appreciate our evangelist been with us 12 plus weeks. I can't even keep up. <clears throat> and what I have valued and appreciated about his ministry is his transparency and his honesty. And uh, none of us are perfect, are we? No, no perfect husbands, no perfect wives. But God loves us in, in spite of our imperfections. And... Uh, when we get to heaven, we'll, we'll be given a new body, and I, I'm thankful for that, a new mind, a new heart, and uh, we'll, we'll spend eternity with Jesus Christ. What heaven is all about is the continuation of relationships. It's the continuation of happiness and joy like we have never experienced it. And so I am so thankful today to have my mother here. Uh, Mom, it's such an honor to have you.
My mom raised me as a single parent to all of the single parents. We have not forgotten you today. And we give you special honor. My mother worked two shifts as a waitress. Uh, I like to play football. I played little league ball. She made sure I always had the gloves, the football equipment, everything I ever needed. My mom would work an extra shift to always ensure that I had what I needed. So to the single moms that are here today, we love you, we honor you, we thank God for you, and we pray many blessings upon you today. As our ushers come, we want to go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to be with us in the remaining part of this service. This is Mother's Day, but I am so thankful that God has given us this time and season of harvest. For those of you who uh, are acquainted with Hope Center, we had been praying for quite some time that God would give us a breakthrough. And we are experiencing that breakthrough right now. We have had over 100 baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And over 140 have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, our Holy Ghost. And we celebrate that this morning. And so, Pastor normally on special occasions, he preaches, uh, but not today. Uh, I, I think it would be in order to hear from our evangelist, and uh, I'm thankful that he is with us today. Father, we thank you for your amazing grace and your goodness. We return today to give you the highest of praise. Lord, you have been so faithful and so good, and as you have reminded us in the last two weeks, there is forgiveness in you. There, there is no ingredient in Christianity greater than forgiveness. And Lord, there is no sin that you will not forgive. There is no confessed sin that you will not forgive. You're faithful and just to forgive us every one of those sins. And we found out just this past Wednesday that repentance is indeed the pathway to forgiveness. And I'm thankful that this morning I was able to repent. I was able to ask you to cleanse me and to wash me and to forgive me for every wrong that I have done. Lord, as a husband, today I repented for any wrong or any neglect that I have done to my family. And I pray that all of the husbands would be sensitive and understand that repentance is a vehicle whereby we may all be forgiven. And so we turn from our wicked ways, we turn from our carnal nature, and we turn to you, our Heavenly Father. And Lord, we are so thankful for the earthly mothers that you have given to us today. Now bless our offering and the precious people that give it every Sunday. I pray that you would bless them in Jesus' name, and let the church say amen. Would you just turn to the one seated beside you and say, it is so good to be with you in the house of the Lord today. God bless you, and let's worship. choosing Hope Center Church to worship with today. We're so glad to see you. If you're a first time guest, we wanna get connected with you. You can visit our guest center at the front entrance of the church and fill out a connect card. You'll also receive a free welcome gift. You can also visit us at hopecenterchurch.com and fill out an online connect card by clicking on the I'm new button, or you can download our church app. From all of us here at Hope Center, we thank you for joining us and we look forward to getting to know you and your family.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on across this place. Can you give God an extraordinary praise? Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You're worthy of it all.
Cause you're worthy of it all Hallelujah You're worthy of it all And for from you are all things And to you are all things You deserve the glory Can we sing that in this room with a unified voice? Oh, you the glory. Can you lift your hands while you remain standing and give him all of the glory right now? Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord, for truly we have been ushered into a holy place. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, your mercy, your grace today in the name of Jesus. Without any further delay, it is Indeed, an honor on this Mother's Day to have Evangelist Charles O'Rourke with us all the way from St. Louis, Missouri. Put your hands together for Brother O'Rourke. He needs no intervention. Well, when I got here this morning, I was going to sit back Enjoy the Mother's Day 9 o'clock service. Prepare for the 1115. I saw Pastor preparing. And he always says, be prepared because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And he looked at me and he says, well, we're just going to change the plans. I said, what's that? He said, well, I'm going to do the poem, do, take care of Mother's Day, but you're going to preach the 9 o'clock service. And the 11. I said, yes, Bishop, but I'm thinking in my mind, I've been spoiled. Because there's always been somebody, you know, when I first got here, I had the 9, the 11, and the 7. Then I got down to the 9 and 11, then I got down to the 11. I guess I better not complain, because after you don't do the 11, that means you're fired. Uh, I love this church. I love your bishop and bishop's wife. It's Mother's Day. Mother's Day is a precious day in the church. Y'all, it's a great day. I'm not the pastor, you know, I'm just being honest. I'm not the best Mother's Day preacher in the world, considering the way I was raised. You might not want me to be preached. I always ask pastors, why do you let me preach Mother's Day? I'm not the best one, and oh, but they continue to allow me to do so. Exodus chapter 2. You know, I have this crazy thing I like to do in the mornings. When I get up in the hotel, I like to get going on Sunday mornings. I'm a hyper person. I know you have trouble believing that. And I'm not as young as I used to be, but I'm not as old as I'm hopefully going to be. But when you get up, you climb out of the, the bed. And sometimes because of all the weights and sports that I've played and the weightlifting and all that, I get a little sore in my lower back. So you know what I do to get going? And I did it this morning, Bishop. I stand by my bed, put my feet together, and I jump on the bed and off the bed and on the bed 10 times. So someone said, how in the world do you jump off that platform, which I'm not going to do this one. I said, that's nothing. I go up and down, do it at least 10 times. People are like, you're crazy. How do you do that? You got a good vertical leap for your age. I said, yeah, I can flat fly for an old man. And uh, I got lots of energy, and I'm just happy to be here. It's a great church. Let me just say this, I'm going to preach, because I'm on a time schedule, and I know that. But I wouldn't expect it. Sister Scoggins, I was thinking about this for the 11.15. I don't know. Uh, I watched her up here. There you are. You always disappear on me. I can never find her. But you know what? 
there, I've met a lot of pastors' wives, but Sister Scoggins is a unique pastor's wife. What I mean by unique is she loves people and she's sweet as the day is long, and nothing changes her. Nothing changes her. You know, you meet these women, and I can say, I know it's bad, but preachers' wives, that sometimes things change them or being around certain people change them. Sister Scoggins is the same whether she's talking to the general superintendent's wife or she's talking to anybody or she's talking to a homeless person. I don't mean to be disrespectful. I'm just saying she doesn't care. She is who she is, and she's not going to change for anybody. And she, I love it because she's real and authentic, and she gets up here and tells the stories just like she does when we're driving down the road. You're not going to find a better pastor's wife than Sister Scoggins. And uh, he's, she's one of a kind, and I love her to death. And uh, I got a call today from Indiana, from Terre Haute, from Jeff Harpo. I said, when are you going to be up here? I said, I don't know. I love Texas so much, I don't want to leave. This is a great church and great people. If you had to tell me, and I'm playing right now, Brother Scoggins is one of a kind. And I love every minute of this time I have here. I love him and I love his wife. And I'm going to shut up and preach. But I love this church. And I'm just loving the ride that I'm on. So thanks for having me. Exodus chapter 2, I'll do my best. I won't preach long. I want you to have time with your families. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren. He looked unto their burdens and he spent, split, uh, sp- spent, spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew one of his brethren. And he looked this way and this way and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And we went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. He said to him that this wrong, the wherefore, the wherefore smitest thou thy fellow. I'll get it out. And he said, who made thee a prince? Pretty tough. Judge over us. Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest thou Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. You know, as I was talking to some people yesterday in outreach, we've gone through COVID. It's different. Last couple of other days have been different as I look across the congregation. Don't forget, we're all back together, crowded up in here. If you want to wear a mask, you wear a mask. If you don't, you don't. You do whatever you want, and we're happy. But I looked on my phone. There's a war still going on. The school was bombed today. Possibly 60 children were killed in the last 7 to 10 hours in the Ukraine. We still got to deal with world events. Don't get comfortable that well, there's a season of peace if we just come out of COVID. Don't think life is just going to go back to normal. Don't think every, we don't need God and we can go back to doing what we're doing. Because I'm telling you as an evangelist, I really believe we are in the last days. And I never said this before. And I think we're in a little short time of peace. But you better keep your ears and your eyes open. Because this thing could break wide open any given time like COVID came through unexpected. I'm I'm telling you, you better get yourself ready and your family ready for whatever comes against the church and the living God. And I want to preach faith in the midst of frustration. Faith in the midst of frustration. Who needs a blessing from God? Let's lift our hands. Lord, I'm not worthy to preach these wonderful people. It's Mother's Day, Lord, and thank you for all of these beautiful mothers. They work hard. They cherish their children. They do the best they can. Some of them on their own, some of them with their husbands. But Lord, I ask you to bless them, encourage them, strengthen them. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. If I could, you may be seated. If I could tell anybody, one person, cherish, and I know most of you do, cherish your mother. Because when I see a mother proud and loving on her child, it just touches my heart. Be thankful for what God's given you. Moses, a grown man, close to 40 years old. He's blessed, educated by the Egyptians. The Egyptian culture that we are still studying today. The Egyptian technology is still intimidating at times. Even to any modern scientist. 
the Egyptian architecture abilities have caused people to travel for miles to study the pyramids. Moses was exposed to that. He would have never been exposed had he not gone through the adversity in his house. He would have never been exposed to the opportunity he had if it had not been for the adversity that he faced. He's 40 years old. He has the opportunities that people would kill for. He got opportunities that he stayed in the house he started had he stayed there. He would have never got the opportunities. All he would have known is how to make bricks without straw. God pulled him out. And sometimes when God pulls you out of natural environments, it can become painful. You suffer a lot when you change sometimes. He didn't pull us out to kill you. He pulled us out to bless us. Moses, as I said, is about around 40 years old. He's blessed. He's educated. He's articulate. He's intelligent. He's bilingual. But in the midst of all this, you can be blessed and still be confused. He's also dressed up and confused. He's a grown man with little boy issues. Sometimes we walk into the house of the Lord. We look nice on the outside, but on the inside we have insecurities and battles and struggles. We face situations on the inside that we don't want many people to know around us that we're facing. He's Hebrew by blood, but he's not. He's neither Egyptian or Hebrew. He's somewhere stuck in the middle. He looks at the window. He looks out and he sees two men fighting. Hebrew and Egyptian fighting. What he sees on the outside is a reflection of what he sees on the inside of him. He sees this Hebrew man and this Egyptian man fighting. He sees these boys going at it. And he wants to do something about it. But yet as he looks at them, there's something on the inside of him says, that's the battle that's going on inside of me. I have a war going on inside of me. I got this over here, and I got this over here. And there's a struggle on the inside of me that is tormenting me every day of my life. If you can grasp what I said, then you can see what is going on on the outside is a reflection of what is going on on the inside do you mean preacher it means simply this I remember I saw two women fighting they were fighting on outreach a couple years ago they were angry they were young mothers they were fighting over their children who had had an argument their children were little kids but the argument got so bad that the two women began to fist fight yeah it's okay to chuckle because I did I'm looking I'm looking at this grown woman I'm thinking you crazy women what are you fighting over I went over and witnessed them. She's, and they began to tell me, well, she, her son did this to my boy. No, no, her boy. And it was arguing. But I began to think on reality. The fight wasn't over these children. The fight was what they were facing on the inside. That they never dealt with their struggles on the inside. And it was manifesting on the outside. Too many times we walk into the house of the Lord and we allow things on the outside to rob us. We allow struggles to get the best of us. We get angry over here. We get depressed over here. We struggle over there because we think, why in the world? And we allow situations to consume us. But reality on Mother's Day morning, it's not what's on the outside that's bothering us. It's that hurt and the pain and the frustration on the inside that has robbed us of the blessings that God has had for us on the outside. We come and sing, but we hurt. We come and worship, but we're angry. We come sit in the house of God, but we're bitter. Somewhere along the line, you've got to walk in the house of the Lord. Look on the inside and let the devil know, I've got pain, but I know a God that's a healer. I got a struggle, but I know a God that's a deliverer. I got a hurt, but I know a God that is greater is he that is inside of me than he that is inside of this whole world. We, 
We live in a, sci a world with full of depression. We have a young generation. We come and we hide under facades. But Brother Tanner, we have more young people committing suicide than we've ever had before. Pastor, we've buried several preacher's wives in the last year. A couple of them were prominent wives, and not that that matters, but stories that spread far and wide. And I began to think, is there any sign? And I remember a, 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 somebody that I was close to. And I asked a friend of mine, a psychologist, about a particular person. I said, I'm worried about this person. I'm worried that she may end her life. Is there anything I can do or any signs that I can watch? My psychologist, my friend that is a psychologist simply said, here's some things I can tell you. Is she still combing her hair? Uh, I said, yes. Is she still brushing her teeth? I'm like, that's weird. I said, yes. Does she still get up and get dressed every morning? I said, yes. She said, well, those are signs on the outside that she's not going to commit suicide because what's on the inside always comes to the outside. I am preaching to someone that's walked in the house of the Lord. What you're battling on the inside will always come to the outside. You need to let the devil know, I know what I'm facing on the inside, and I'm going to call it out on the outside. Depression has no power over me. Anger has no power over me. Bitterness has no power over me. Loneliness has no power over me. Addictions have no power over me. The joy of the Lord is is my strength and when I think of the I know it's Mother's Day but we live in a world of turmoil I got pain but I got joy I'm hurting but I got healing I'm struggling but I got a miracle the devil's attacking but the Lord is still my shepherd is this okay church I know it's Mother's Day I do a lot of outreach, and I meet a lot of men. It says, it's my Mother's Day. I'm not, I'm going to give you, I'm not going to pick on the women. I'm going to pick on the men. So Father's Day, I'm not, wherever I'm at, we're here or somewhere else, I'm going to pick on the men. I'm going to pick on the women. But I'm going to bring it. Why, when I knock doors, I do meet a lot of men, and I hear a lot of stories about men in domestic violence. Why? Is there so much domestic violence in society? Why do so many men, and I'm saying this, abuse children? Why? I've cried and wept and I've walked in the apartment complexes and knocked on doors and invited in when I know that that man is abusive to those children. Our, uh, the, a boyfriend is abusing his girlfriend and slaps her around. It makes me mad. I'm six foot two, 200, none of your business pounds. And I want you to understand there have been some times that I wanted to grab some men's neck and begin to pound them like you've never been pounded before. I wanted to grab some men and say, let me tell you something, big boy. You want to fight somebody, fight a man. I don't care what she says to you. I don't care if she talks bad about you. I don't care if she cussed you out. I don't care what she does. Walk away. Don't you ever touch those children. How can you? Or a stepdad. And I'm not here to get off on this. How could you abuse a child? You disgusting. But hear me. It's not. I began to. I never saw a man who did any of this who liked themselves. What do you do? What you see on the outside is a reflection of what's on the inside. You walk into the house, you see what they've got in their house, whether it's all cluttered or not. The garage is all cluttered. The trunk of their car is a mess. What you see, some people are happy living in clutter. Some people are comfortable living in clutter. 
Maybe it doesn't bother you, but let me tell some, somebody that it does. When are you going to get tired of allowing the clutter to rob you of the blessings of God? When are you going to allow, stop allowing the mess in your home, the stuff in your garage, the trunk in your car to be so messy that you can't walk into the house of the Lord and lift up your hands? When is somebody going to come inside of here and begin to clean out the house, begin to clean out the garage, begin to clean out your trunk? and let the devil know I've been bound too long I've been hurt too long I've... somebody needs to walk inside of here and said I just because it looks like I'm it doesn't mean I am God is getting ready to change me God is getting ready to bless me God on Mother's Day is getting ready to heal me Moses sees the fight on the outside. I got 10 minutes. Is that okay? And it's a reflection of the inside of him. He raises his hand to stop the fight. He's trying so he can stop him. The fight on the outside forced him to confront the conflict on the inside. He's been conflicted for 40 years. But some circumstances in his life brought to the surface the inner conflict that he had in his soul. A murderer doesn't just become a murderer overnight. A rapist doesn't become a rapist overnight. An abuser doesn't become an abuser overnight. A depressed person doesn't become depressed overnight. Anxiety doesn't happen overnight. Struggles of, 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 of peer pressure doesn't happen overnight. Love of the world, you don't just wake up and fall in love with the world. Heaven living for the world and halfway for God does not happen overnight. Temptation doesn't just happen overnight. Something on the inside has to come to the outside. Is this okay? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. He rises up because now he's faced with a Hebrew and an Egyptian fighting. There's an Egyptian and a Hebrew fighting on the outside while he's fighting on the inside. Now he has to choose which side he's on. Forty years has not demanded that he make a choice. But one incident has pushed his emotions to the surface. Do you choose your conditioning or do you choose your pedigree? Moses chose his background, his heritage, and he kills an Egyptian. Moses buries him in the sand, looking to the left or the right. He sees nobody. And he tries to cover up the anger that he allowed on the outside. But 24 hours later, what he sees on the outside is totally different than what he saw yesterday. He doesn't see an Egyptian and a Hebrew fighting because he made a choice only to find out there's still conflict on the inside. You can release yourself in the world, but your problems are not going to go away, sugar plum. You can go dr get drunk. You can go get high. You can go here. You can go there. You can quit the church. You can talk bad about the preacher. You can refuse to go to the altar. You can go live like the devil. But until you deal with the inside, you will never see the blessings and the happiness that God... I'm preaching to somebody, you got to walk inside of here and say, devil, I've made a mistake, but I'm getting ready to deal with me. I'm struggling, but I'm getting ready to deal with me. I'm hurting, but I'm getting ready to deal with me. Somebody rise up and let the enemy know I'm all alone. But when I say the name Jesus, when I say the name Jesus, when I say the name Jesus, when I say that name, he's my healer. Somebody make a joyful noise on Sunday morning. Somebody let the enemy know I'm tired, but I'm holding on. I'm struggling, but I'm holding on. Mama don't like me, but I'm holding on. Mother's Day ain't the best, but I'm holding on. okay church I don't necessarily like Mother's Day why do people always ask me to preach Mother's Day it's okay to laugh why 
Why me? I don't know what they're saying behind me. I'm afraid that I don't want to ask. Why? I thought pastor had at least one of them. Why me? I'm not, I don't like mothers. Why? Because I have to deal with me. Why did my mother walk out on me? Because she wanted to go get drunk and high. Do you know my mother? I was told was, and I'm not saying this because I never saw her. Was considered, they always said, oh, your mother was a beautiful woman on the outside. The men loved her. But she was miserable on the inside. And she would rather go party than raise you. What? And then foster care. Why? Mother's Day. Why? Then become a Pentecostal preacher. Why? And then all of you family-oriented people that love each other and kiss on each other and you hug your babies and mamas are so good and sweet. But God has a sense of humor. If you're ever going to be blessed, O'Rourke, you've got to deal with that pain. You can't cover it up and act like you got it all together and get in front of them preachers and act like your life is perfect when you're a human. You battle depression. You battle anxiety. You battle the fact that your mama walked out on you. But let me tell the devil, I may not have a physical mama, but I got a spiritual mama. My God is my mom. My God is my dad. My God is my provider. My God is my alpha he's my omega he's omniscient he's holy he's righteous he's omnipotent he's the beginning he's the end he is my mama he is my blesser he is don't let your flesh win don't let the devil win we got this baby we got this baby we got this baby we got this baby we got this we got this we got this the Holy Ghost and I wasn't even supposed to preach it thank you brother Tanner I'll pay you later where's Bobby Wade when I need to have somebody to make fun of I was chuckling brother Barry you're over there saying when he said be thankful Bishop said be thankful brother Barry said well he looked at brother Tanner he said well at least we're not in a prison house somewhere well I was chuckling because I'm thinking brother Barry you're so sweet if they arrested you they'd let you go now, Brother Tanner, I can't promise anything. But Brother Bear, he's out. Tanner, you're staying 10 years. <laughs> Moses is not able to function at the level he's able to think on. He's not able to function at the level he's able to think on. He's functioning like a king, but Moses, you're not a king. You got internal conflict that has gone external. He's fighting and his greatness is coming out. And when greatness comes out, it causes conflict because greatness comes out before you're placed in the position. Come prophesy. I'm hurrying. I'm watching. Don't, don't worry, Bishop. I'm watching. But don't, I'm coming to you. Don't, get, don't, don't bite. I had somebody, Brother Tanner, we're going to have a talk. That somebody come prophesy and said, God's going to use you mightily. You're going to be an anointed preacher. I was new in the church. I thought, my God, I don't even know what the preacher is. I didn't know who the general superintendent was. Didn't care. I didn't even know what a presbyter was. or I barely knew what my pastor's name was. And I'm called to preach. you got to be kidding. No, I ain't preaching. That means no drinking, no smoking, no all the things that I did. I'm just telling you, I was a new convert. No, I no, uh-uh, no preaching for me, big boy. Because I don't know if I'm going to get my alcohol, my drink, and my women. I'm just being honest. I ain't giving up all that. But I felt the calling on the inside. And there was all hell broke loose. Because there were people in my life that today like they wanted their little Johnny to be called to be preacher. But my little Johnny's been raised in church and my little Johnny's never drank and he's never smoked. And he's never been a woman. And look at that, that stupid Italian boy up there. He ain't no good. He comes from a witch, a wicked family. He's a drinker, a druggie, and he's been around the block and back and up and down the street and to, your, to everybody's corner. And look at him. Now you're saying he's cold. We're going to make his life miserable. We're going to run him off. We're going to do what we can to prove that preacher wrong. You talk about times that I got angry. When I would ask to get a fiery five and preach, there were people in that church who would get up and walk out. How dare you let him up there preach when my Johnny ain't up there. We just won't come. They were letting, telling the pastor. They're showing a sign. If he's preaching, we're not because he does not deserving of it. 
he comes from too rough a bar. We remember when he came to church drunk and he danced on top of one of our cars acting like a complete idiot. We know this boy. He is not, no, he does not deserve to be up there preaching. Let me make something real simple. Do you think that made me feel good on this inside? Absolutely not. Do you think I got mad and wanted to punch some people in the face? Absolutely so. Do you think I got frustrated and said, God, these people are a bunch of hypocrites? Of course I did. But God said, you know what? Just because I got a calling on you doesn't mean it's going to walk in. Everything's going to be perfect right away. You're ahead of your time, O'Rourke. You got to stay patient. You got to love me when you're frustrated. You got to praise me when you're frustrated. You got to give me glory when you're frustrated. You got to praise me when hell breaks loose. You got to pray. When she don't like you, you got to praise me. When they talk bad about you, you got to praise me. When you can't. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody. You got to praise him in the frustration. You got to praise him when you can't take it no more. You got to praise him when hell comes against your home. You got to praise him when you're sick in your body. You got to praise him when you're tired. Somebody give him a hand clap before I blow a blood vessel. Somebody let the enemy know we're going to have revival on Mother's Day. Mother's Day is not just a day. It's a day we worship our God and we're thankful that we're mamas. Thank you for giving me that baby. He's fighting. Greatness comes out. Let me tell you something, the Holy Ghost. I got, I got to hurry. Your riches come before your money. You get educated before your degree. You're a leader before you get the job. You're a visionary before you're a CEO. Your wife before you. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I got to hurry. I got 10 minutes to rev up there. Man, I wish I could play like you can. Can you sharp where you at? It's okay. Don't worry, buddy. I know you're discouraged. Maybe it'll get better for you this afternoon. But he knows what I'm talking about. But let me make something real simple. I wish. You know what? I've been overlooked all my, Let me tell you something. You know when people go looking... You know, I feel like I'm a gifted man. I feel like I deserve opportunities. But that's because my thinking is ahead of my position. You know how many times I've sat and watched pastors overlook me and say, well, we're going to give Johnny this position in the church. I'm thinking, well, how many souls has Johnny ever won? Well, because he's, our, he's smart. I'm smart. Well, he's not quite as wild. I'm not that wild. I'm not a bad looking guy. And I'm thinking, what have they ever done except brown nose and kiss people and tell people how great they are so they get some position in the church somewhere and they get handed something to them. And I'm out there 100 sunshine, beating doors, bringing people to church, but I'm not good enough to lead anybody because I don't do this or I don't do that. Don't you think I get bitter sometimes? Don't you think I get mad sometimes? What do I look like, chopped liver? But somewhere on the line, I got to say, God, it's not about me. It's about you. And I got to step. You got to stay faithful in the frustration, sugar plum. Sometimes life is not a bowl of cherries, but you got to get up in the morning. You got to go to the enemy's camp. You got to take back what he stole from me. Give me my joy. Give me my work. <laughs> Kenny, I know I'm a loose cannon. And it's been to my dismay. I probably could have been pastoring somewhere by now or been in a superintendent. But no, not that. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe presbyter. Oh, forget that. Maybe Sunday school secretary. Nobody wants that job. <laughs> Sorry if you're a Sunday school director, if you're listening. But if it makes you feel good, enjoy your job. Nobody's going to vote you out. Let me make something real simple. I feel like Moses sometimes, in spite of all this, he sees another conflict, and he runs out there with a big S on his shirt. So he wore Superman t-shirts too. Moses had issues like I do. With his cape and boots, he's trying to help people who don't even like him. Have you ever tried to help people who don't appreciate the help you're trying to give them? People trying to help, but they give you more struggles and they attack you when you try. 
I get told all the time the things that are wrong with me of why I don't deserve of this. You're a loose cannon. You don't fit. You don't trust. You don't do this. You know, I get told that all the time. But this is how I was created. I'm like, well, how many other people, I wonder, in my flesh bring people to church? How many other people get the results in the altars? But God said, you better shut your big fat trap, O'Rourke. This ain't about you. You better not get frustrated. You better not get high and mighty. You better not get full of yourself. You better get on your knees and pray like you've never prayed. I'm preaching to somebody when life don't go good, learn to go to an altar and lift up your hands and worship the name of Jesus. When things don't go your way, lift up your hands and say the joy of the Lord is still my strength. Bishop's wife, can I have five minutes? Okay. Of course, she would say this to anybody because she's so sweet, so I don't know what that means. You ain't never been hurt until you get hurt by somebody you're trying to help. Every time you try to do something good, things get worse instead of better. The more Moses tried to help people, the bigger mess he found himself in. He's got a dead man married over in the sand. He's out there in another fight. Before he could get out of this, here comes that. Looks like every 24 hours, a new kind of fight begins to break out in Moses' life. He just buried somebody in the sand. Now he's trying to break up two boys fighting again. Is there anybody here, be honest with me, that you're like, Lord, don't send me another email. I don't want to see it. I don't want that phone call. I do not want that phone call. Do not let that phone ring, Sister Scoggins. I don't want to hear from that doctor. You ever get like that? Oh, I don't want to hear from that doctor because you don't want another fight in your life. It's a fight on the inside. I got a fight on the outside. I got a fight in my personal life. I'm talking to somebody here. You're tired. You're struggling. You're worried. You're scared. And you're tired of fighting. I'm here to tell somebody in the midst of the frustration, find a way to walk up in this crib and lift up your hands and say, I don't have to fight this by myself. But I got the faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen, that when I lift up these old hands, Go to an old rugged altar that there's a God up in heaven that said, I will fight the battle. Because of time, I'm going to say this real quick because this is really good. It's free of charge and you can pay me later. I'm not on PayPal and I'm not on any other thing, so forget it. Moses comes out. He, we, he trying to, to break up another fight. And one of the Hebrew boys looks at him and says, who are you trying to straighten us out, big boy? Who do you think you are? Who made you prince? Whoa, 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 whoa. This is what I love. Hear me again in a word I say. He said, who made you prince? The Lord had made him prince, but he was trying to do the right thing at the wrong time. God had called him to be this. But yet he had not been ordained of this yet. Don't try to get there before you get there. Write that in your little books. Don't try to get there before you get here. Just because you can think it doesn't mean you have to be placed there. You can be anointed and still not be appointed. You gotta learn to walk inside of the house of the Lord and say, I can't get ahead of myself. I haven't got what I need, but I'm still got the faith that God is in control. I'm still gonna go to that altar. It ain't done on Mother's Day yet, but my God is still alive. I'm still gonna lift up my finger. I'm still gonna. Hey, you on the front row, sir. Hey, listen to this free charge. I used to love wrestling when I was a kid. I, Hulk Hogan, man. Hulk Hogan. He'd rip. You know who Hulk Hogan is? He wore that shell shirt. He got that big old muscles. He got all that tan. He'd rip off his shirt. He he bounce around. But this is what I loved about Hulk. Hulk Hogan would get down on the ground. WrestleMania, and Hulk would be on the ground. And he'd be laying there, and big old somebody be on him. And it looks like Hulk's gonna die or get beat. And the the wrestle judge go one. Two, he's about to be done. And all of a sudden, Hawk would take his finger. One, two, three. And he'd raise his head. And he'd shake it. And he'd stand up. And he'd shake it some more. And he'd let them know, I was down, but I wasn't out. I was somebody who would raise one finger. 
You may be down, but lift up one finger. Lift up two fingers. Lift up three fingers. Stand to your feet and let the devil know, I was down, but I'm not out. I was down. Look what the Lord has done for me. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus, Somebody let the enemy know on Mother's Day, I'm alive and I'm well. I'm alive and I'm well. I'm alive and I'm well. Somebody lift up your hands across this place. Just get ready to get in place. I got to hurry. I ain't gonna get through all this. So God will put greatness in isolation, which can cause frustration because you have to be able to survive frustration to be a leader. Because if you can't handle internal fr frustration, you sure can't handle the outside frustration. If frustration on the inside is going to make you quit, what are you going to do when you have frustration on the outside? God allows frustration on the inside so you can deal with the frustration on the outside. So you can be frustrated and still be faithful. I can go home now. I think I've covered my point. The guy said, Moses, who made you prince over us? His prophecy is in the mouth of his enemies. There were people that would look at O'Rourke and say, who made you a preacher? How do you think you can preach to us when you live such a disgusting life? They looked it on the outside, but they were not holy on the inside. But in the midst of my enemies, like Moses, <laughs> it's not what people say about you. It's what God says about you. That's all that. Don't worry what the guy behind you thinks. Don't worry about what the girl in front of you thinks. Don't worry about the church person. Don't worry about the person on the bar stool. Don't worry about your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Just learn to trust in him. So his haters said, who made you prince? And he says, are you going to kill me like the guy yesterday? That's how the devil works. So you killed him. You getting ready to kill us too? I know how you lost your temper. On one hand, he's just discovered a prince, and he didn't know it. He's anointed and not appointed. His greatness has not been revealed yet. And the next sentence, he finds out his past has come back to haunt him. But the praise, the prince, is a liar and a murderer, because that's what Moses was. What do you do when you got holiness and confusion in your life? What you do when you are a strong person and everybody comes to you for answers and direction, but you are equally a weak person. You're a powerful person, but you're a tired person. People will see you on the outside, but they don't understand what's going on on the inside. The turmoil that you're facing, Moses is a prince over them. He will deliver them. He will bring them from the hands of the Pharaoh. But also, he just li lied, killed a man, buried his body. Not to mention he stutters. The enemy will always send a strong attack when you're close to your destiny. I said the enemy will always send a strong attack when you're close to your destiny. When you're going through something on Sunday morning, get your foot on the rock and let the enemy know there's a blessing getting ready to come around the corner. There's a miracle on the back row getting ready to happen. There's a healing getting ready to happen for this mama. There's a change getting ready to happen for this daddy. God is getting ready to bless me like I've never been blessed before. Start playing behind me. The Bible says in Hebrews, the gifts and callings are without repentance. I thought it meant people could be gifted without repenting. I've heard preachers preach that, and I'm just like, you don't even know the Bible. Come on, you've been in this longer than I have. Study a little bit, big boy. That's not what it means. What, when I studied the text, it really means once God calls you, He does not repent. He does not change His mind. So Moses, you may have murdered somebody. You may have lied. You may have cheated. 
but I still got a calling on your life because I love you and I got something greater for you and I'm getting ready. Do you hear what I'm telling you, Sugar Plum? God's calling is without repentance. Just because you messed up and you're frustrated, get the faith that everything's going to be all right. Just because you're tired, get up in the morning and praise the name of Jesus. Just because hell's come your way, get up in the morning and praise him because he... Somebody on my left hand side, they wrote me off, but I'm still here. Somebody on my right hand side, they gave up on me, but I'm still here. Somebody let the enemy know I'm not giving up. You know what, sis? Oh, oh, I didn't even see. I'm half blind. Hey, bro. I mean, you, Brown. Yeah, Brown. I thought, uh, yeah, okay. Sometimes people just like, you know, they, they write you off. They don't ever believe in you, man. That same lady, one of the ladies that get up and walk out of the church every time I got up to speak. I'll never forget this. I had preached a revival for a guy that came out of that church in North Carolina about three or four years ago. We had like 70 or 80 people get baptized and 50 or 60 get the Holy Ghost in this little church in North Carolina. The reason I'm telling you is since that lady was out of the same church and he was out of the same church, they went to a funeral together. He flew to Kansas City and she was there and they went to a funeral. And he said, you remember Charles O'Rourke? You're from our church. We got saved in our church. He said, she, he said we just had a 70-soul revival with him. God's really using him. And you know what she said? He told me this. I didn't even know he was preaching. She lied. She knew. It broke my heart. I'm like, I'll never make her happy. And God said, in the midst of your frustration, there's some people and some things that will never go away. But you got to trust me that I'll take care of you in the darkest hours. And when you can't take... I'm preaching to somebody. You don't know what's going to happen, but you know God's got your back. Some people will never believe in you. Some struggles will never go away. You may have to carry them to your grave, but lift your hands up and say the joy of the Lord is still my strength. You got this, God. You got this on Mother's Day. That man may never come back. Your dad may never tell you he's sorry. Your mama may never tell you she loves you. That financial situation may be a struggle. You may have to battle that depression, that anxiety. You may have to carry that sickness. Sister Scoggins, the doctor probably told you this. They tell a lot of people to battle cancer. It could come back. We don't know. We don't know what tomorrow. And she could walk around here going, well, I got a good report, but who knows what two years is going to bring. That's what the devil wants. I had a lady walk up to me. I'm done preaching. I should have said this earlier. And she walked up to me. I saw, this is how crazy it was. Sister Joy was with me. She'll be at the 11 o'clock service. I saw a lady, clear, clear. She was at least 100 yards from me. I don't know how far. And I started running towards her. She's walking her dog. I was drawn to her. And I made my way to her. And I handed her a church card. She said, is this religion? I said, yes. I was drawn to her. She said, well, I'm a Satanist. That's the way I was raised. I see how God. I said, well, I, that's the way I was raised. I was drawn to that because I come out of it, but I'm not of it. I was in it, but it doesn't control me anymore. I was born into it, but it doesn't have authority over me. I lived it, but I'm not of it. I'm preaching to somebody that's walked inside of here. It don't matter where you came from. It don't matter what your struggle is. You got to lift up your hand and say, I may be struggling, but my faith is going to overcome my frustration. My faith is going to overcome my battle. My faith is going to overcome my pain. My faith. I know it's Mother's Day and a lot of people write Sunday off, Mother's Day off, but I don't write it off because we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. If you need something from God, lift up one hand across this building right now. You need something from God. If you need God to answer some kind of prayer in your life, whether you're a guest or a member, I want you to stand to your feet right now. If you need God to answer some kind of prayer.
I'm done, Pastor. We got to get out of here. We got to make. But you know, I'm going to tell you this. That girl, I said, Satanist, you know what she looked like? She looked like you. She looked like you. She looked like you. She wasn't dressed in black. She was physically an attractive lady. Because the devil shows you. We think they dress in black all the time. That's not how they work. We didn't dress in black. I look dressed the same way I do now. I loved clothes. I loved all that stuff. Because it was all about your flesh. And the devil will try to make you run to your flesh to get victory. But you're never going to be happy until you turn your fear, frustration to faith. And go to an altar. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I need the presence of the Holy Ghost to come down on me. I need a healing in my mind, in my body, in my soul. I need a breakthrough in the spirit realm. I need you to move. Who needs something from God right now? Hold up one hand across this place. We got any guests that need a spiritual breakthrough? Hold up your hand across this place. If you need God to answer any kind of prayer, I want you to make your way to this altar real quick on this Mother's Day. Several of you raised your hands. We're going to find out where you're at. Some of you raised your hands. That's it. Well, what's people going to think? You need God to answer any kind of prayer. I want you to make your way to this altar right now. Here's one. Here's two. Well, I'm good. I'm going to stay right here. Well, then you didn't hear a word I said. It just went in one ear and out the other. Because this is where you deal with your frustration right here. Come up here close as you can. Come on up here. This is where you deal with it. I know it's 9 o'clock in the morning. It's not 9 anymore. But it was when we got here. That's it. Make your way up here. Come in. Come in close quickly. Come in over here. Come in closely. Come in closely. That girl could have looked at me. Come in closely. And she could have said, well, I just am not religious. But she looked me square in the eyes. Come in closer. And she said, I'm a Satanist. The devil is more proud and more out than he's ever been before. People, we did it behind closed doors when I was young. By the time I was in my late teen years and early 20s, it was becoming more prevalent and more outward. More practiced. It's more accepted. And now it's everywhere around us. And the church people are struggling coming to an altar while the devil is promoting his world. We won't come to an altar. The Holy Ghost is the only way to overcome the darkness around us. It's not our singing and it's not our preaching. It's the presence of God. I want you coming as close as you can. I want you to lift up both your hands to heaven right now. That's it. Lift up both your hands to heaven. I want you to begin to call on the name of Jesus across this altar. Lift your hands across this building and begin to say the name Jesus. If you can't do anything else, some of you preachers, you call yourself men and women of God. Please help me pray for these wonderful people. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to begin to repent. Begin to ask God to forgive you of anything. You don't have to tell us what it is. Just say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. After you ask God to forgive you, I want you to begin to praise Him. Begin to worship. They can sing behind me, but begin to worship Jesus. Begin to worship Him. You're not going to get through this with a shallow prayer. It's not going to be us to stand here. You've got to call on His name. You've got to say the name Jesus. Anybody can wave their hands. Anybody can do this. You gotta break through. You gotta pray. Lord, I'm asking you to touch her right now. You see the pain. You see the hell she's been through. I'm asking you to get a hold of her heart right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm asking you to move in her life. In the name of Jesus. Get on. There you go. I need to come home. The world is about to destroy me. I've tried everything, I've done everything that preacher talked about. Your mouth and begin to pray. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead your blood right now. Let it out. That's it, Megan. Open up your mouth. That's how the devil works. I know how he operates. I don't mind if you go to an altar, but I want you to walk out this mother's day the same way you came in. Same way you came in, don't you change. But I want you to say, devil, get off of me. I'm not giving to you, but get off.
off of me. Let go of me. Do this anymore. We need people getting delivered. We need people committing their lives to God. Daddy, how do you want to raise your kids? I don't need to pray. I'm too good. Mama, how do you want to raise your kids? Come on. Come on, you've got this. I've never felt in this church, Pastor, and I'm going to step out on them. Some of you are hugging next because you're ready to quit and go home and say, I've already prayed as long as I'm going to pray, preacher. Well, I can't help those of you. But God told me there are guests in this place. I'm sick and tired of the devil robbing homes, mothers walking out, drugs, addictions, depression. Listen to me closely. I'm talking to the guests, the people that have been here five times or less. I feel this in the Holy Ghost. If you want a breakthrough in your life, please listen to me. If you want a breakthrough, I want you to hold up your hand real quick right now, quickly. If you want a breakthrough, hold up your hand so I know who you are. You want a breakthrough. Hold up your hand so I can see it. Some of you want, if you want a breakthrough, I want you to come stand up here in front of me real quick. Come up here, right up here, please. Please come up here real quick. Come up here and stand, come in closer. If you want a breakthrough, come on up here. I know time is quick, I, I see it. Let's go, quickly. Come on up here, guests. Come on up here, come on, come on, come on quickly. I would need the men and women of God to help me real quick. Real quick. We got guests. I'm not doing this because I'm trying to drag this thing on. Come here. I, I may not, some of you may never get another chance. You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Says God is dealing with your heart. He's trying to reach you right now and bring you home. People around you may not want to do it. They may want to play and they may want to live like the devil. But life is short and we're all going to leave it. Don't leave here letting other people tell you how to serve and what God to serve. I want you to lift your hands up here. Those that are up here, lift your hands to heaven right now. Church people, men and women of God, please pick one person quickly. We're getting late. Pick a person. I want you to lay your hands on them very quickly. I want them to sing one more time very quickly. If you've got to go out there, you could go. Lay your hands on them right now and begin to pray. Sing very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of them can receive a Holy Ghost. We need to pray them through right now. They need to get victory right now. Right now. I've been doing this whole load. I'm tired. Open up your mouth. 
Please don't walk out of here the same way you came in. Please don't walk out of here the same way you came in. Please, I plead with you. 